Right. So hello, this is Gay Adelman with Save Our Schools with Dear JCPS. And we are excited to be kicking off our All History Matters campaign uh, this week. And uh, one of our very first guests that we have invited into the studio today is Isaac Fossil Van Wyck. And he is with Squalus Puppeteers. And he's going to talk to us today about uh, some exciting opportunities that we have for our, our families in JCPS and around the state for that matter. And uh, also some of the history uh, regarding our, our, actually our public school history, some of the history that is local and, and relevant and uh, timely. There's a great opportunity that we're gonna share with you on today's program. So I'm gonna introduce Isaac and ask him to tell us a little bit about himself and a little bit about Squalus Puppeteers and then we'll go into some of our other questions. So welcome, Isaac. Thank you, Gay, great to be on the show. Um, yeah, earlier this year, um, I guess we started about a year ago this time um, to revamp a show that uh, our founder of Squalus Puppeteers, Nora Christensen, had um, made a couple of years beforehand. She got a grant from the Kentucky Foundation for Women to do a show about Ann Braden, um, local global civil rights activist who I am uh, people who know her life. know her well and, uh, and her story. Um, Isaac, do you mind if I interrupt you for a second? It may just be on my end, but I am getting a little bit of a lag. So do you mind kind of um, backing up like 30 seconds and saying what you just said? <laughs> um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, you turn off your camera, that might help. I turned mine off too, so we'll yeah. together. All right, so great. yeah, um, just to say our... Um, Squalus Puppeteers founder Nora Christensen um, got a grant from the Kentucky Foundation for Women a few years ago to make a show about a Louisville civil rights activist uh, named Ann Braden. And I was saying that those who know about Ann or knew Ann um, know her well and, and know her story well. And then there's a lot of folks out there who have never heard the story of Ann Braden. So uh, we wanted to re-amplify that story. Uh, we're a mostly white uh, group of artists and wanted to see how we could, as white folks, you know, responsibly talk about race uh, in and, and local history in a time of a long overdue racial uprising uh, of last summer of 2020. Um, so we decided to revision this show about Ann Braden and bring it um, to, a, to a new audience, a younger audience. Um, that was a, a tall order. Uh, the story of Ann and Carl Braden is complex and difficult. And, um, and yet when I read Ann's book, uh, The Wall Between, which documents her story about um, buying a house for her friends, uh, Andrew and Charlotte Wade, who were black and not able to buy the house they wanted to buy at the time. Um, when I read that story, I felt like the language that she used was so simple and um, and concise and powerful um, that that I, that we could indeed translate it into something that that all ages could understand. And um, so that's what we set out to do. Uh, we finished the show earlier this year, 2021 in March. And it just coincided incidentally with, um, it was just 15 years since Anne's passing. Um, so we've been showing it mostly virtual programs of the show in schools um, since March. Um, we've probably shown it to about three or 400 kids at this point. And, um, the reactions have been really, um, really heartening, encouraging, and um, we're really proud to be presenting this local history to young audiences. I think I think we take a poll at the beginning to to hear if anyone has ever heard of this story before, and 
uh, it's a sadly underknown story. So it's it's new information for all these children. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I also wanted to ask you to take a minute and let us know who your mother is. Thank you, yeah. yeah. So I grew up knowing, having the real honor of knowing Aunt Braden as a young person because my mother, Kat, Catherine Fossil, what, was her biographer, um, I guess still is, you know, her biographer, and she uh, ran um, this uh, program called the Anne Braden Institute for Social Justice Research out of the U of L Library uh, until just she just retired this past year. Um, so she was an advisor on the project, just sort of, you know, thinking about what to include and how to frame it. Um, my sibling was also an advisor on the project and helped, um, has helped me facilitate the program when we show the program. Uh, my sibling works, was formerly working with uh, the Peace Education Program and still works in youth violence prevention programs. So she helped me to create a curriculum around the program for young folks to unpack the show and sort of connect some of the individual feelings that the characters were feeling, try to make the connection between that and um, and how, how racism works, how it spreads among people through hatred, through anger and rage, um, and how we can take those same passions and redirect them towards um, positive social change, social justice, organizing, things like that. Do you mind trying, let's try your camera again. I'm sure our audience would like to see your face when you're talking, but um, let's see how that goes. Yeah, let's see if it works out just tell, tell me right when it, it's a problem if it does right. um so far so good so um i am a little bit familiar with the squalus squalus puppeteers um i've seen the the ann braden puppet and uh i had seen the link to one of the puppet shows that you had put on previously um but it had been a while and so i was really really glad uh, that you reached out recently and sent me the link uh, to the 40 some odd minute um, video that you've put together about the Ann Braden story. And uh, uh, I was telling you before we got started that I actually watched it twice because it was, there's just so much um, wonderful information uh, that you, you kind of need to see it more than once just to take it all in, but also, uh, just because I wanted to take notes, like it's, it's such an important piece of our history, of our local history. Um, and, you know, we've, hear, we've heard bits and pieces of it. I think most of us have heard bits and pieces of it, but we don't know the severity of it and uh, the, 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 the timeliness uh, of the relevance of it to today. And there's yeah. just so many wonderful pieces in it uh, that, that bring that home. That uh, and then we've we've got legislation that's been proposed uh, that has been pre-filed that could make the presenting of this con this program uh, illegal or at a yeah. minimum discourage teachers from uh, bringing something like this into their classroom because it invites uh, the 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 scrutiny and the and the uh, lawsuits and the various things. So you know we. We have to get in front of this and we have to make sure parents and students uh, know uh, this message and how important it is that uh, we, we don't allow ourselves to be put in a situation where we, we're prohibited from teaching the truth, knowing the truth, learning the truth uh, in our own public school system. So, yeah, well, I'm glad you brought, the, brought up the legislation. I wanna just roll back just in case we've gone too fast for anyone to say that um, on a very basic level and and her husband Carl Braden uh, were were both white folks and they and they devoted their lives largely after this event that's told in the story with the house and all the conflict around that they devoted their lives to organizing other white folks to join the fight for racial justice um, and were mentors to many folks in this area as well as around the country. Um, so, 
um, but they were they were largely hated. I mean, just like you know, we you know with the, we had they had us on the news and they were talking about oh our proud history of Anne Braden, but um, you know there was a there was a time when no one even their friends were not were not really able to be seen with them or associated with them because they were seen as so dangerous. Uh, they were labeled communists, traitors to their race. Um, and, and um, yeah, I would just say, I, I feel like the connection to this anti-COT legislation today is really relevant because um, the legacy of that suppression uh, is still very much alive. I mean, the, the legacy of Ann and Carl's work is alive and there's been, there's been people organizing and fighting on both sides of that wall um the whole time and so there you know there are people in the city in power who still don't agree with what they did you know in 1954 um buying a house for their friends who weren't allowed to buy the house do you know unconstitutional laws um allowing not allowing them to buy that house um so, uh, but, um, oh shoot, it says my connection is unstable. Can you hear me okay? Let me turn I my camera off. Now. I turned mine off just to see if that helped. Um, sure, yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Um, just to say that, um, as you mentioned, these um, Senate bills are on, are on the docket uh, for the session that opens in the Kentucky legislature, I believe January 4th. Right. These are very dangerous bills, and I and, and I know that you and others um, in the education community and concerned parents, teachers, activists around the city uh, have been having important conversations about how to come together to um, to organize against this. To um, yeah, to 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 put up a, a worthy fight to the folks who are trying to claim that um, the history, telling our, you know, our young people the history, of, ugly history of this country is, is something that should be censored or against the law. Um, so we're doing a little bit of a, a promotion. We've had, the, we've had the show kind of kept behind a password wall where you have to pay to see it. Um, and, um, from December 11th through December 25th, we're gonna make the show, um, available for online viewing for free uh, for people to watch it and discuss it with with their families and friends um, and in the middle of that on December 18th we're going to host a public screening of the event uh, online and in person and invite uh, teachers parents students um, anyone concerned about this issue to come out and and um, share ideas just use the film and the legacy of Ann and Carl Braden and Andrew Wade as well um, as a jumping off point for discussion around this important topic. So that was a lot, but I, I hope you could hear some of what I said. Definitely. Um, and you heard it here first, folks, uh, the special screening that is being offered um, is something that they just decided to roll out. And we're going to be uh, amplifying that message in uh, the, the materials that we're putting together. Um, and let me back up just a little bit too. Um, Ann Braden is one of the co-founders of the Kentucky Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. And I serve on the board of directors for that organization. And they have also, uh, they are um, co-sponsoring the uh, production of an activity book that we are going to be putting together and making available uh, to JCPS students and uh, children in the district. Um, and, and we want to incorporate the, the story of Ann Braden and, and the Wades and the house and direct people to uh, the website and to participate in a discussion. And one of the things that you and I talked about uh, is how important the discussion piece is of this program. And so uh, whether that's through the, the screenings that you've mentioned or uh, 
uh, I think you, you said it was okay for us to maybe raffle off uh, an in-person program that normally costs, it's a $500 value for them, for you to come to the student's school and, and do this discussion and present this film uh, on location. And so we're going to be making it possible. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to give away anything that I don't have permission to give away, but. Uh, That's correct. Okay, good. Well, we're trying to do a campaign, um, a fundraising campaign to make the the show available for free. Um, and, and we're looking for teachers uh, in particular who are interested in bringing it to their classrooms and may not have, uh, their schools may not have the budget or means to pay us the normal fee that we charge um, to, show, to show the film and then do the educational program that follows it in schools. So yeah, we'd love to um, offer uh, one of those slots to to any any teacher or um, I guess parent as well. Uh, anyone who can advocate for, you know, has the authority to uh, bring, can, bring the program know? into a classroom. Before it becomes um, illegal too, get it, get it in while you can, you know, um, I just, wow. we, we can talk about how wrong this legislation is, you know, as a separate idea, um, separate conversation, maybe even another program, but um, there's just um, so many, so many uh, great important messages that need to be communicated. And this, this program does such a good job of that. And we, I just wanna see you get it in front of as many people as possible. Uh, between now and when the General Assembly starts uh, on January 4th. So whatever we can do to help facilitate that. Um, but if you're interested in the raffle, if you're interested in the, the, the in-person one being brought to your school, um, we're going to have a form on our website. Uh, teachers and parents, PTA, moms, whomever can come out, students, you know, um, get your parents' permission, but um, come out and fill out the entry form and uh, we'll have a drawing to see who is going to be the winner of this in-person visit and help you get it scheduled uh, in your building as soon as possible. And then um, on top of that, we'll, um, like I said, it'll be mentioned in our activity book and uh, on our website, and we'll do the, the best we can to connect uh, the educators and the, the program uh, so that you can facilitate these conversations uh, in our community. It's really critical. Yeah, there's um, a preview that um, we can share the link for uh, in the description of the show today, um, where you can see, uh, you know, just get an idea for what the show looks like. It tells a little bit about the um, overall uh, premise of the story. Um, and feel free to share that around. If, if I do want to say as a, um, I don't know, kind of a disclaimer, we've been saying, oh, this puppet show and that puppet show, and I, no one else is, you know, gay is not one of the ones to be uh, particularly suspicious about that. But a lot of people are like, what the heck, a puppet show? And um, just, to, just to give you a little extra boost of confidence that puppetry is... Uh, you know, just like animation or um, or filmmaking in general, or uh, or theater uh, is 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 can be a really powerful way to tell important stories. And and you know, our hope. I I don't know if the legislation comes down. Fingers crossed. We will do the organizing we need to do, and it won't. But uh, puppetry is seen as such a harmless and foolish thing. Uh, that's just for kids that um, maybe we can still slide under the door. We're going to keep, we have programs scheduled uh, far beyond January um, and, and we're going to be showing those programs and, and, you know, um, doing this educational program as until someone forces us to stop. Um, and I, I think we have a little bit of leeway for being trivialized by <laughs> authorities. Well, you know, whatever, whatever works, but um, I learned something from the program that I think is a natural evolution and a natural next step, which is uh, when uh, 
the Wades were being pre prevented from moving into their home, uh, Anne and Carl and other supportive neighbors created, uh, I, you can correct me because I don't remember the exact title, but it was the Wade Defense Fund or the Wade Defense Committee, yeah. Committee, committee. And, uh, you know, I anticipate a natural next step for this work is, you know, a teacher defense committee because teachers are going to continue to teach it and we encourage them to continue to teach the truth. And we need to be able to provide support and resources for teachers who find themselves uh, in those precarious situations where they've got the Karen coming in and saying, you know, uh, we don't like you teaching. Uh, about Ruby Bridges or whatever it is, and uh, they're going to need support. And uh, this is this is a constitutional uh, violation of of, of 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 our rights in America. And so it's only a matter of time, you know. In fact, other states are already going through the motions ahead of us. So um, almost kind of like another thing I learned in in your program, how from out of nowhere a law changed that freed. Carl and and put Anne's trial uh, in in the history books never came to pass because some other dynamics were taking place behind the scenes and so you know it's possible that Tennessee gets the constitutional challenge and before you know it before we ha got to really uh, have anything happen that it starts to get overturned I mean that's what I hope but I also hope that whatever we are um learning from it this go around uh, i hope we learn uh to finish what we started so we don't find ourselves in this same situation in, in another 50 to 70 years because that's kind of what uh it feels like to me is that a lot of this is just unfinished business and uh you know history does repeat itself and the parallels are so uncanny that this this program being local um as well as being uh timely uh, is is a great vehicle uh, to to really get out in front of uh, the community. And I love the, that it's puppets and it's um, innocuous enough that, you know, um, that, that, that we're, but it's also teaching, you know, the really complex messages. One of the things you and I talked about previously uh, is how, you know, in the discussion, you talk about mobs and you talk about uh, some of the some of the things that uh, how do people get to that point and and you know it's a soft entry also into really complex complex uh, conversations and so you know um, I I compliment you for a very well written production as well it's it's very um, historically accurate and easy to follow. Yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, it was a tall order uh, for sure. Um, just making it palatable to young people, and and yet uh, most of the we've done a few screenings of it uh, when it first came out, and most of it was virtual at first. But we've, you know, I'm very proud of the work we did with the show, but the the discussions afterwards have always been so activating. Um, you know, a, a room full of uh, righteous and a angry adults or righteous and angry young people. Um, excuse me. So, so that's something I really look forward to. And I, I see the program as a, as a tool for discussion. Uh, uh, so yeah, when we, when we do this screening on the 18th, I, I encourage anyone who has watched it at home or anything like that to please tune in um or or just or just come by for the discussion afterwards because i think that those connections that we make with one another after seeing uh a piece of art that moves our hearts um you know those are where the where the the real effect of of the of the creative work kind of takes place um and it, one thing i can't remember what made me think of this but well you were just saying it, of it being timely and that, you know, relating to the legislation, there is this, and the mobs especially, there is this very dangerous, you know, thing that's going around, and we've seen it in Texas, and we've seen it in uh, Virginia with the, with the political race there, um, that people 
on the on the right get galvanized by some particularly in their mind a particularly offensive work of 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 art um i'm thinking of person uh, beloved which is the subject of so much controversy you're frozen so i'm gonna take my <laughs> video off um can you still hear yeah you were just coming in a little choppy i don't think we missed anything but it was it was getting precarious i cannot hear okay you. good I turn it off at the right moment. Um, but um, uh, just to just I wanted to quote Tony Morrison, who says that. Excuse me. That she said the very serious function is distraction. So um, I think it's that that she was targeted, you know, her writing was targeted in Virginia as a, a source of this controversy because, I mean, she's it's just another opportunity for us to remember how important she was in in her words in um, speaking the truth about race in particular in this country um, and that and that as an artist, you know, I guess what what I mean to say is that if if we are, you know, if this piece is is Harold problematic offensive thing by the people who are showing up violently at these school board meetings i uh i count that as a point of pride and i'm, I'm i feel totally ready for that <laughs> um i um yeah these people are looking to be offended by things that um are are just ugly truths about the country that they that they would rather forget um, or suppress from, you know, from their children knowing about. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. So um, you, you mentioned that the production is based on Ann Braden's biography, uh, The Wall Between. Was it a, so your mom it was her biographer. So, but, but this is Ann's book, right? Ann wrote this one. I just want to make yeah. sure I get the right. It's an autobiography, then, right? It's kind of, it's only. I mean, she does tell a lot about her life leading up to that, but it's a, it's a more like a memoir about that specific story, um, because she, she was a journalist and she goes in, she treats the, the story with with her journalistic. Yeah. She, you know, she gives it and tells the whole story with a bunch of research and everything, um, but that is different. Yeah, that's the wall between, and that book I think came out in '57. The went down in 1954. The Bradens and the Wades both joined together and went on the road telling this story. And eventually, while they were on the road, Anne started writing this book about it. Um, my mother wrote her book. She started, you know, soon after I was born or when I was very young, and didn't finish it for forget when her book came out but it's called subversive southerner and that's a biography of Anne's entire life um and Anne was still alive when it was published and they went on the road together uh promoting the book and Anne was very reluctant about it she never wanted a book about her um but my mother's an oral historian so a lot of it um was conversations between the two of them the end of the book is a is a conversation between them about what she thinks about a, a book about her and what sort of comes what should happen next um to carry on the work of her life so well so um folks should also pick up that book the wall between um because it it is the the autobiography uh that where ann tells this story that your production is based on and your story is called the other america which uh, is kind of the flip side of the wall between, if I'm understanding it correctly, because it's really what's on the other side of the wall is the the other America. Is that is that accurate? And did you come up with that title? Is that where that came from? Uh, that's from a quote. Um, she tells the story a little bit in the uh, in the film um, and when she was younger, but before the stuff happened with the Wade case she got a letter from 
a sort of civil rights mentor of hers who she really admired, who was black, who said, you have a choice, basically. You don't have to be a part of the world of the lynch mobs and the other white folks <clears throat> who are um, just sort of business as usual, white supremacy. Um, he said, you have this choice where you can join the other America. There's this other America that's always been there. That's the, the America that has always resisted um, injustice that fought against slavery during times of slavery and that has fought against Jim Crow. Um, <clears throat> so she repeated that story a lot throughout her life that that being a kind of a formative thing for her that that's what she felt like she was becoming a part of and that she devoted her life to um, inviting more white people, especially to join the other America, as she called it, which is a complex um, idea. And we often ask young people after seeing the show how, you know, how they think of that. And some people are like, oh, it's just black and white, you know, there's like white America and black America. And um, Anyway, I, I think it's a little bit more complex than that. Um, but uh, anyway, that's the origin of the title. I don't know if that's in the book she tells that story, but that's from interviews that, that she gave. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, some of the stories that are in your production, um, I, I, I wonder how many people even remember uh, Fountain Ferry in Shawnee, in the Shawnee neighborhood. And, um, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of families who still live here today who remember those days and those times. And so it's not even that distant uh, of our history. Um, one of the things that she says in the book and in this production is about how, as a white person, uh, the sound of cops and sirens always meant protection for us. And uh, that other America, the other side, um, also realizes that it can be uh, turned, the quote in your production is, uh, turned against you and used to destroy you, I believe, something along those lines. And, um, you know, it, it, it does a real good job of, kind of um, setting the, 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 the time, you know, taking you back in time and feeling what it's like to uh, be in the shoes of uh, someone who's told that they can't uh, go to a, an amusement park simply because of the color of their skin. Um, you know, it may, and, and her story of putting herself in uh, the shoes of other people and wondering what it must feel like and it's just really powerful so um i do hope that people watching this program today uh are interested if you're interested in knowing how you can access this this production either through the virtual options uh that isaac mentioned previously we will have uh a link uh, on our website, uh, sharing information on how you can access this, this uh, program, as well as information on the December 18th uh, screening and a, a form to enter our raffle to give away uh, an in-person production to bring this program to your school or to your class, the $500 value, and uh, also how you can support uh, through fundraising efforts uh, to help make this program available to, to other students uh, who don't have the resources, access to resources at their schools. Um, lots of great information. Um, Isaac, thank you. I, I, I want to keep talking. I'm not uh, wrapping up just yet unless you need to go, but um, I just do want to tell everybody uh, who we're speaking with, we're speaking with Isaac Fossil Van Wyck. And he, and I'm, did I pronounce that correctly? You got it, yeah, not everyone does. <laughs> okay, um, he is, uh, I recognize the fossil name uh, from Kate Fossil who uh, has written several books and been very uh, influential in the 
uh, continuing the, telling the story of the legacy of the Bradens and the Wades. And um, the, something else was going on historically that I think is really significant that um, your program makes mention of. And that is that the Brown versus Board, uh, Board of Education decision took place two days after the House, uh, was it two days after the bombing or two days after the neighbors showed up? Um, there was, so you, we'll have to watch the program. Everybody, everybody needs to watch the program. I think it was. Yeah, there's a very useful um, timeline of events in the wall between and, um, oh, what the heck is his name? The local NPR reporter, I can't remember on that. What, some anniversary of Anne's, uh, of the Wade case, I think it was. Um, anyway, there's a local NPR story that that does a really helpful timeline, and like day Ryan by day. Burton. Ryan Burton, is that who it is? No, it's, oh. um, uh, it'll come to me. Um, Put the links on our website. We'll find all these resources. Links there. Um, but in any case, yeah, the Brown versus Board of Education decision came down uh, just just right around the time that Andrew and Charlotte Wade moved into their house. So right. Ann, Ann and Carl bought the house. The, ne the next day or that later that day, they came home and gave the keys to the house to Andrew and Charlotte. And um, I think over the next few days, they moved in. And there's this sort of famous moment of the, the guy, um, James Roan, who sold them the house, uh, approached Andrew Wade and thought, oh, he's a black guy. He must be doing work for the Bradens. And he said, what? But then he saw him moving stuff into the house and he was like, what are you, what are you doing? And he said, uh, you know, Ann and Carl Braden uh, sold me this house um, right after they bought it from you. And, and so I'm moving in. And um, it was just around that time that the Brown versus Board decision came down. So that was just, I mean, just we think about these things. All of the like, tensions, all the racial tensions and, and attempts to suppress and oppress uh, Black families from having access to the same uh, opportunities that white families had. Um, and it's, it's still happening today, you know, so some, some of it uh, is repeating itself, some of it never left. Um, something else that I found interesting in your program, um, they, the police actually acknowledge that they know who was behind the bombing of the house and that there would be an arrest, but that it never came. And, you know, that reminds me of uh, the Ahmad Arbery uh, situation and how that almost didn't uh, become uh, an arrest. And, you know, again, people who know what happened, you know, the story of all the lights being dark in the neighborhood because uh, something was about to go down in that, on that street, people who, who were part of that, Back then, some of them are still alive today. That that um, was never resolved, and you know I think that we think because it's so far in the past that uh, that's just you know the way it is. But I don't think that's true, and I think that um, you know there still should be some accountability, even for things that happened back in 1954. And you know, uh, hopefully. The, the denial and the rate, the fact that they're trying so hard to deny uh, us from knowing the truth and knowing history, um, hopefully will backfire and will make us as a, as a society even more resolute and more uh, intent on making sure that we never uh, face this type of crisis. It really is, it's a crisis, again. Yeah, yeah, I it's, there's some really striking stuff with the, at the end of the show is arguably the most difficult and complicated part of the story because it's like the trial dragged on and it, it was hard to tell which hard to know what part of that story to tell to a young audience so that their eyes don't just glaze over because right. it's a lot. it is a lot uh, you know just a lot of information and legal jargon and stuff but um 
there's so many parallels that um, I, I I imagined, especially to the to the Breonna Taylor case, where it's like um, you know, there's this moment where we're like, well, what do you think happened? Do you think they chose this the path of 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 um, interviewing the right people about who they knew had done the crime and um some of the kids raised their hands and then and then she says no they did you know they did something else um so it's hard not to think of the brutality of the Breonna Taylor case and also the stupidity you know willful stupidity of the way that it's been handled since then um in in thinking about how history repeats itself um yeah there's a there's such a common it's such a common thing to be essentially blaming blaming the victim right. um for the for the violence that happened that, that that's what happened that bombing went off and they knew who did the bombing but the they thought oh what the real problem was actually these agitators and Carl, who started the whole thing as some kind of a communist plot to right. overthrow the Kentucky government, which, you know, they laughed about it. At, and, and, and then they looked at, you know, thought about what the reality of this sentence, I mean, Carl was supposed to go to jail for 15 years, I think. Um, so it's no, I don't know, it's not, it's no joke, um, just as it's still no joke today. Well, and, you know, a lot of the same name calling like socialism and communism as scare tactics uh, in order to paint someone as uh, a bad person when in fact, uh, you know, they don't, they don't uh, really understand the word. Uh, it's just an easy label to, to scare others into um, demonizing and whether it's true or not, you know, I think uh, that's not even the, we're, they're not denying uh, that they were part, you know, participating in socialist or communist activities. It, this is a free country and those are not necessarily bad labels. They, they've, they've turned uh, the, these things into scary labels in order to uh, stir their red beet, stir their base, you know, feed the base red meat. Um, which is what we're seeing again today. And in fact, the, the, you, you can hear uh, Frank Simon is one of our local uh, bigots in the community who speaks at board meetings. And uh, I've edited out some sound clips of him just standing at the microphone screaming, Marxism, communism, socialism. You know, that's, they think that uh, teaching the truth is somehow indoctrination. And uh, yet um, the hypocrisy is, is, uh, incredibly glaring. Uh, there have been some really great um, educational pieces as well as memes um, circulating that kind of um, drive some of these points home. And again, these are all tools that uh, are, we're amplifying on our website, not just the Dear JCPS website, but uh, allhistorymatters.com is the campaign website. And there is a social media toolkit out there where you can access some of these memes that really kind of uh, highlight the, the, the absurdity and the hypocrisy and, uh, you know, help, help us help us really uh, drive that message home and educate the community about what's really behind uh, these attacks on our public schools. And, uh, you know, this is just the latest uh, version of you know what has been developing uh really from uh over the past 40 to 50 years these efforts to privatize our public schools to siphon money away from our public schools uh you've heard us talk about alec and the Koch brothers and the uh dark money agenda and ties to lawmakers and funding their campaigns and threatening to primary their campaigns if they don't toe the line. And so now they're more obsessed with staying in power than they are about serving their, their constituents. They're more interested in serving uh, the big money donors in order to stay in power. And so uh, this is all part of the corruption and part of uh, 
the efforts that we've been uh, engaged in at uh, through Dear JCPS as well as through the Coalition for the People's Agenda, um, and you know this attack on quote unquote the teaching of critical race theory uh, is just the latest version of it. And so you know um, the session starts January fourth, and uh, between now and then, and even during, it's a sixty day session. So. Uh, depending on when this law, this legislation gets brought forward, uh, the, the more noise we can make now, the greater chance we have of stalling it or uh, delaying it in committee and hoping that it never sees the light of day in this 60 day session. Um, there are things that we can and should be doing right now to mobilize our uh, families. And this, this uh, program that Isaac has been speaking about uh, the, uh, the, the Other America is a great uh, jumping off point. It's a great opportunity to uh, have uh, conversations uh, and also just be uh, informed and be up to date with our, our, the history that our community has faced in the past and uh, how relevant what's happening today, uh, how relevant what happened back in the 1950s uh, when all of this uh, was taking place is to today as well, and how we're at a crossroads. We really are, we're at a crossroads. Um, so there are gonna be lots of opportunities for our, our viewers to have access to this program, as well as I wanna take another second, if you don't mind, and talk about some of the other things. I'm wearing my All History Matters uh, sweat top, but we also have these bags that we're going to be giving away or selling. We're gonna have some for sale as well as some to give away. Um, and you're, you can pre-order them on our website. And in them, uh, the ones that we sell, we're still working on the price. It depends on what's going in them, but probably somewhere around $25 to $29 uh, each. Um, and what's going to be in them are some activity books. This is just a, a blank uh, because the activity book is still in development. It's a secret. It's a surprise. Um, but the activity book will have lots of activities in it, including uh, some of the things that we talked about from, uh, from this, this puppet show. And discussion. We're going to have some some uh, uh, some of the facts that are presented in the program with a with instructions on how they can uh, get more information and uh, several other activities in the book, as well as books from some of our favorite local authors and how you can order. This is a free book, and she has a series of books. So there's information on how you can order. The remainder of the series. So this is great for librarians as well as for your home library. Um, also in the bags, there's going to be um, these mirrors, which are Louisville PTO on one side and Girls on the Rise on the other side. These are little compact mirrors. And one of the activities in the book is about uh, affirmation, self-affirmation, and some of the uh, programs that are taught through the Girls on the Rise. So you'll learn a little bit more about how you can uh, bring that program into your school. Uh, we also have an activity where you can make um, tissue paper balloons. And so it comes with all the crafting tools that you would need to make your own uh, tish, tissue paper balloon uh, for your desk. Um, it comes with information from our sponsors you know, information about their organizations. And so if you're watching this and you're an organization and you'd like to know how you can be a part of this bag and this activity kit, um, that information is all, also on our website. So uh, just let us know. And uh, depending on what it is you want to provide, we have buttons, pins, masks, uh, window decals, um, magnets, keychains. These are various uh, things that will be in these gift bags. Uh, the activity books also come with a 24 count box of Colors of the World crayons. I just have a sample of 
just a, a few of them right now, uh, but the, it, we have purchased a thousand uh, 24 count boxes of these uh, crayons, Colors of the World crayons to go with the activity book. So at a minimum, we're going to be giving away uh, several hundred uh, bags, as well as um, up to at least a thousand of the activity books with crayons. And even the activity books without the activities are still um, worthwhile to have. Uh, if you can get one of the one of the, the first come first serve for for the bags, we will also have a place on our website where you can sign up to receive the bags or go ahead and pre-order. And if you pre-order, you're guaranteed to get a bag. But we are making it so that for every purchased bag, there is at least one bag given away. But most likely, we already have enough donations to make sure that we have um, a couple, several hundred uh, free bags to give away even before we've sold our first bag. So we want to make it so that everyone who wants a bag can get a bag. Um, and you know there will be surprises in there. Um, you might even see this pink unicorn in one of your bags because we're going to be uh, putting uh, some golden tickets in some of the bags with uh, discount uh, access to other merchandise at a discount. The bag itself, this bag is a nice like a hoodie bag with pockets. Um, and so this is part of the, the ones that you buy, the $25 to $29 version. And we've got mugs and wristbands and um, lots of other things that um, will be in the bags. So we will, we will surprise you, but there will be at least one uh, $10 item, such as a mug, uh, in addition to all the activities in the books that we talked about. So. Um, some other activities include historical markers. Uh, we're going to direct people to some various historical markers around town, including uh, the Wade House on Roan Court. Uh, we're going to have um, some other, I think we should send people out to see the Peace Park. What do you think? Um, we'll have some other historical um, places that folks can just go by and know more about the history that you're learning about through uh, the activity book as well. And uh, you can, there's self-portraits that you can color and uh, you can design your own mask. We have a template where you can design your own mask and upload it and we'll print that mask for you. Um, and may even make it available for others to buy if you, do, if you submit a, a winning design. So, Anything else, Isaac, that I have forgotten to mention or anything that you heard us talk about that you have questions about? Well, no, I'm excited. I'm really excited for the activity books and uh, all of the stuff that you're mentioning giving away. I guess I did want to just um, piggyback on something you just mentioned, the Wade Braden Memorial Peace Park. If folks don't know about um, that, there was a really amazing groundbreaking ceremony on Juneteenth of this past year, uh, where Governor Bashir came out and we did a whole ribbon cutting thing. Um, it's near, it's very close to where, to where the Wade house was. The street is no longer named the same thing, but they are in the process of renaming it, um, Andrew and Charlotte Wade Boulevard or something like this. Um, and um, there were members of the Wade family there with very young um, children or descendants from Andrew and Charlotte Wade. Um, it was a really beautiful event. Um, and it, just a few days before we had shown, uh, screened the show in at the Shively um, Community Center. Um, so it was really meaningful time and place to um, share that history with the with the community of Shively, which is now an extremely diverse community. Um, we had support from Shively's first black female mayor, um, Beverly Chester Burton, who um, has done some amazing work, in, in, including the Wade Braden Memorial Peace Park. So just to say that, yeah, that the history um, matters in the 
you know, in the books and in the stories, but also in the geography and in the way that we remember things, um, the names of places. Um, so I'm, I'm really encouraged to see that changing. And uh, I hope the rest of the world, that is the people who keep, you know, history from changing with their stubbornness and selfishness, I hope they follow suit with some of this more institutional changes. Um, it's always a toss up is does the advertisement having more disabled people or people of color really mean that the corporations care about racism or uh, representation it's hard to say it's an encouraging image and i and i i'm glad to see more of that in the world but um, there's a lot more work left to do as we can tell with this legislation that's on on the docket no question, no question. Well, um, you said it was okay if we play, I think you said there's a minute long teaser. Do you have that link handy or can you put it in? I, the yeah, um, we'll play it. Um, should I just put it in the chat? I, if you think uh, my internet is more stable, uh, I can try it on my end. It seems like it's yeah it's going to come through the sound will probably come through for you better so i'll just chat that to you and then um i think you said that's about a minute uh, we'll go ahead and play that and then we'll just come back and do a little wrap up I think right off running out of time so i sure do appreciate having you on let me try sharing my screen here make sure i do this When you step over the line and you decide to live in the other America, all those forces of so-called protection, they can turn against you and aim to destroy you instead. So that's what this story is about, the other America. I tried by every open and right. honest method to buy a nice new house. But every time they saw I was a Negro, the deal was off. Okay, I'm going to pause that because I think I shared the wrong screen. Does that look? Are you? Do you agree that you're not seeing this, the right screen? Oh, I, yeah, I heard all the audio, but I see that you're sharing the tab that has the full full film open. Yes, and that is not. It opened in a different browser, and so then when I shared it, I shared the wrong one. So let's see if I can unshare. Sorry about this. Well, that does give listeners at least some taste of what the um, what the show sounds like. We, you know, we had the opportunity to make it like a film, so it's got music and different voice actors and different things. Are you still seeing the full show? Did I, I am still seeing that. I wonder if the first one, the first, the tab on the far left, is your. Uh, preview maybe no that looks like the same thing i just went ahead and pasted when you it step over the line that. and you decide to live in the other america all those forces of so-called protection they can turn against you and aim to destroy you instead so that's what this story is about the other america mm -hmm. I tried by every open and honest method to buy a nice new house. But every time they saw I was a Negro, the deal was off. So I talked to a white real estate agent and he advised me point blank. He said, Wade, let's be realistic. You get a white person to buy the house with your money and then transfer it to you. It's that simple. When Andrew asked us, we didn't even have to think about it. Now, this decision would change the course of mine and Carl's lives forever, but we really had no idea what was to come. All right, let's see. Stop sharing. Okay. I'm going to turn my video back on so we can 
say thank you, Isaac, for coming on our program. You've been listening to Save Our Schools with Dear JCPS. I'm Gay Adelman. Our guest today has been Isaac Fossil Van Wyk with, uh, I, I, I'm forgetting, Squalus, Squalus Puppeteer. You're going to have to tell us how the name Squalus came about because every time I go to think of it, I'm like, what is that, that word again? Yeah, it's we're coming up on the 25th anniversary. Anyway, named after Latin name for shark, small shark. Wallace. The Latin name for a small shark, is that what you said? Yeah, it's like the name of the species is like Squalus, you know, Magnificus or whatever, different that, things. That explains the logo as well. Um, we've been hearing from Isaac about the program uh, that Squalus Puppeteers has put together that uh, talks about the history of the Bradens and the Wades and uh, the story of The Wall Between, which is Anne's autobiography. And it's called The Other America. And so we want to um, invite you and encourage everyone who uh, was uh, able to participate in our program today to visit our website, dearjcps.com, as well as allhistorymatters.com and learn more about how you can bring this program uh, into your school community, into your home, into uh, various organizations around town, as well as how you as a member of our community can support the work that is going on. Um, again, thank you, Isaac, for joining us uh, on Forward Radio 106.5 FM. Thanks so much, y'all. All right, thank you. Thank you.